driven people become more driven when they have adversity. They become more driven when they have success. They want more. They know exactly where they want to go, exactly how they're going to get there, exactly who they want to go on that journey with, other driven people. They know what they need to do each and every day to achieve what they want to achieve. We built a room full of driven guys. That's why you're here. It's week number six of this NFL season, and welcome to the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones, along with Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett, inside the Academy Sports and Outdoors studios here at the Star in Frisco. It's, it's the Cowboys and the New York Jets, a 3:25 kickoff Texas time at MetLife Stadium on Sunday. Cowboys trying to bounce back this week, and Jason, I thought from last week's game after falling behind 31 to three to, to Green Bay, I was really admiring the fight that this team had in coming back in the fourth quarter of this game. And I know that you feel like you've got the roster of the players on this team, that that fight will continue this week against the Jets. Yeah, no question about it. I obviously, it wasn't the way we wanted to start that game. I actually thought we did some good things offensively early on in the game, both running the ball and throwing the football. We moved the ball down the field, but the turnovers really hurt us. And they did a good job capitalizing on that. Uh, when we turned the ball over, they, they subsequently drove the ball. Uh, they ran the ball fairly consistently well against us throughout the game. So that was a little bit disappointing. We've always been a very good run defense, so we have to get better there. Uh, but there's no question, even when the game got a little bit out of hand, everybody just hung in there. Defense started to get some stops. Offense was able to convert some of those drives into touchdowns, and we got it close, but it certainly wasn't good enough. Of course, you're playing a Jets team that's got off to a rocky start, but they get their quarterback back this week, and one of the strengths of this Jets team is their run defense, and uh, they've invested heavily in the their front seven on defense. Of course, they don't have C.J. Mosley right now, but two first-round draft picks in Leonard Williams and Quinton Williams up front. Yeah, they, they certainly have a lot of talented guys in their front seven and, and, and it's really probably the strength of their team right now and uh, they're not only good pass rushers but they are good run defenders linebackers are very active they have good cover guys uh, on the back end so they challenge you a lot of different ways uh, when you look at uh, what's going on with your offense ranked number one in the league in total offense I think one of the things from the first five games of the season what's happened with your pass offense and now to go along with Zeke and the and the rushing offense is you can beat teams both ways but I know that you want to be as balanced as you can offensively yeah, right? I think that's probably when we play our best football when we're attacking different ways starting with the run in the past sometimes you get into games where you're going to run it more sometimes you get into games where you have to throw it more sometimes you throw it more early and you run it late uh, but I think when you break the huddle and you can attack them with both the running game and the passing game and threaten them that's when you're playing your best offensive football I think we've done that at different times this year obviously we're work in progress trying to get better and better every week we're going to be uh, joined by Amari Cooper later in the show and what I would like to ask you specifically about Amari is his route running ability I know it's something that that Sanjay Law works with all his receivers with but it was on display in a big way last week against Green Bay yeah Amari's a great route runner and, and you know it starts with his athleticism and his athletic ability. He's, he's, he's quick, he's fast, he's explosive. He can threaten the guy who's guarding him down the field vertically. And then his ability to get in and out of breaks, his change of direction is outstanding. So you put all that together along with just his know-how and, and, and his desire to be good at the details of route running, you know, makes him a very dangerous guy. You saw a lot of different routes in that game on Sunday against Green Bay where he got open and it was the art of route running. And, and he and Dak are on the same page. Uh, they made a lot of big plays for us. All right, we're just getting started on this edition of the Jason Garrett Show. David Moore is coming up next. Uh, I think it just starts with us as players, just playing more edgy. You know what I mean? Just come out there being more physical. The Jason Garrett Show is brought to you by AT&T. More for your thing, that's our thing. Ford. Ford is the best in Texas. The University of North Texas, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. And by Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. Welcome back to the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones now joined by David Moore of the Dallas Morning News, sportsdaydfw.com. All right, this Cowboys team loses to the Packers. They lose the previous week to the Saints, and there was one theme. It was turnovers on offense. Yeah, you now have six, six turnovers in a two-game span. 
That's significant because it's the most turnovers in a two-game span since Dak Prescott has been the starting quarterback of this team. So now you step back and you say, why is this? And, and while I do think it's a bit of an aberration, uh, because we've talked a lot before about how that's just part of, of Dak Prescott's DNA is ball security, and that's one of the things he does best. But look at what they're doing differently this year. They're going down the field more. They're being more aggressive. I think that you're seeing Dak Prescott make some throws this season that you haven't seen him make the previous three seasons. Just in doing that, you're increasing the opportunity for turnovers to come. And that's not to say all of these interceptions have been on uh, Dak's fault. Uh, you, you've had four in these last two games. One was a Hail Mary. Uh, Mari Cooper talks about how that first one in that first possession was on him. I think that was actually probably a split one. But there was a third one in that game that was, was on the official. Yeah, on the official. Go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and there was one that didn't count that was taken away uh, because of a penalty in the end zone. But uh, this, is, this bears watching, I think, because they are more aggressive. You're seeing him make some throws he haven't made, hasn't made before. And there's a risk-reward uh, ratio there that's changing a little bit. Now, some of that is acceptable, but you don't want to swing too far in the other direction. Personally, I think this is just kind of the transitioning of the offense right now to being a little bit more uh, of a passing offense than it's been, and you're seeing them kind of work out some of these kinks. All right, the other thing, the, sort of the theme of the week this week is the run defense. This team has played good run defense over the last year and a half. However, there have been losses that have included 100 yards or more given up by the defense rushing. Yeah, you want to go back to the start of last season. Uh, I believe they've lost eight games now, counting the playoffs, where they've allowed the other team to rush for 100 or more yards. And, you know, Green Bay was not running the ball well when they came into that game. And Green Bay didn't have Devontae Adams. And so uh, Dallas should have done a much better job in the, in the run game. Uh, they didn't. You, you hear so the phrase you hear so often, gap integrity. Uh, they, they got loose with that. Uh, they didn't get in their run fits. They weren't disciplined enough. And to me, what you didn't see in that game when the Dallas defense is at their best is they swarm to the ball. It's not just one player getting to the ball. You see three, four guys getting to the ball. You didn't see that against the Packers. All right, our thanks to David Moore, who never lacks integrity, gap or otherwise. And coming up next on the Jason Garrett Show, it's Amari Cooper. He definitely makes it look easy. It's definitely not easy. Um, you know, I mean, you, you look at the one he had up the sidelines to be able to spin the way he did. And, you know, after he tight rope the sidelines, he, he's a special player. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. The Jason Garrett Show powered by Reliant Energy continues now here at the Star in Frisco and time to look at our featured player of the week. He had 11 catches for 226 yards and a touchdown last week. It's Mr. Omari Cooper. He thinks he caught it. Well, he dragged the right foot. The question is, was the left foot in? He's got possession oh, there. Yeah. That's he a sure catch. Did. Yeah, well, I think everybody in the room has the playmaking ability to go out there and um, be able to change the game. Um, I definitely feel like I do. Uh, I know MG does. Um, you've guys seen that over the over the course of um, the first five weeks and the, the three games that he's played in. Um, Cobb definitely uh, does. Uh, he's a real pro. He's been doing it for a long time. Um, and he makes plays. Uh, you got Tavon. <laughs> Obviously, everybody know what Tavon is all about. Um, real speed guy. Anytime the ball is in his hands, he'll he'll make a play. So um, just have a, a a good group of guys who you know are real playmakers. Well, first of all. <laughs> I was kind of banked up because I had hurt my quad um, earlier in the game. So uh, I know it would be hard for me to create the separation that I know I could create had I not been hurt. Anyway, when they called the play, it was a double move. And um, I was excited about it because I think I had like 170 yards or something like that. And I knew that if that route would be completed, that I would be close to or over 200 yards. So I was really excited to run the route. Um, but the guy I was playing against, he was pretty good and he was giving me some um, some uh, awkward looks. And I know uh, Devontae Adams, the receiver from the Packers, was the guy telling them to do some of those things because, you know, we play similarly in terms of how we release at the line of scrimmage and stuff like that. 
First down after the penalty at the 45. Prescott, lots of time rushed. Now deep down the left side, there's Cooper at the 30. Left sideline to the 20. Broke a tackle to the 10. Broke another one to the 5. Walks in for the touchdown. I just ran it, and I had to use my strength to get open. Usually on a double move, you you know, you know just have to use your feet. And you beat the guy because it's a double move. You, you pretend you're doing one move, and he falls to that move, and he just, and you just win. But um, being that he was getting advice, and um, he gave me an awkward look. I kind of had to fight through it. So when I fought through it, I caught the ball, and he tried to punch the ball out. Um, and by him doing that, he missed the tackle. I kept running up the sideline. There was another guy coming in an angle at me. And uh, I, you know, I knew I would score because I tried to pretend that I didn't see him so that I could then make the move on him. Um, so when I pretended that I didn't see him, that made him run full speed, thinking he would just make the tackle. And I just spun on him and scored. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the, I think that's what receiver is all about. I think, um, you know, I, logically, um, if you're open, it's easier to catch the ball than when you're not open. You know, as a guy, you know, grabbing you, slapping your hands down, trying to prevent you from catching the ball. So I think the um, emphasis should be to try to become as open as you can. Uh, and when you do that, first, the ball is easier to catch. But secondly, um, it's, you're an easier target for the quarterback to throw it to if the defender is close to to you um, when the ball is supposed to be hitting your hands uh, or when the quarterback is supposed to be throwing the ball and it's he, the quarterback is really indecisive on what to throw it. Prescott in the gun, fakes right, deep down the right side, he's got Cooper all alone to the 40. The thing that drives me um, is what, what has always driven me and that's just to be the best. You know, I want to be the best player to play the game and uh, you know it's a long way to go but that's, that's always what's driven me and that's never going to change. Amari Cooper, what a playmaker he has been in his time here with the Dallas Cowboys. And up next here on the Jason Garrett Show, we take a look at the playmakers for these New York Jets. Welcome back to the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Bill Jones joined by Will McClay as we break out the Telestrator and take a look at these New York Jets. And let's start with the quarterback, Sam Darnold, who returns after missing the last three games. Yeah, he returns, and he's a big part of it. You know, first-round pick, they got a lot of things on him. What he is is very talented. He's got arm strength, and he's an athlete. Here, we're going to take a look at his arm strength. What we're going to have here is they're going to show the linebackers mugged up. They're going to show a coverage. He's going to read the coverage when they drop out. It's probably going to be cover three with single high. So what he's going to get is he's going to get the receiver to go here, deep throw, he's going to get there, he's going to get a whip route here, and he's going to read the coverage, and then he's going to find the deep throw based on the single high safety. All right, here we go. They're going to motion a little bit into here. All right, it goes. He's going to point out the mic. Watch those guys in the back mugging up. Okay. Now, he's going to see the vertical throw and then an all arm throw. Great throw down the sideline for a big play in the preseason. So he's got some weapons on the outside, but he also has a pretty good weapon in that backfield, Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, great player coming back to him and then added with Sam Darnold. What he is is a great back, but he's a weapon out of the backfield. Here, you'll see him move and go right here in the slot. Now there's going to be pressure. You're going to get a look at the value of both of these guys. He's going to roll left. There's going to be nothing there. He's going to come all the way back around here. You'll see Le'Veon Bell adjust and a great throw from the quarterback into the back of the end zone to his running back. Okay. You see the roll. He gets pressure. He rolls all the way back here and throws the ball over the top and Le'Veon Bell catches the ball like a receiver over the top. So he's a handful at all levels of the defense. And here's another example in the passing game. Yeah, they'll use him as a receiver as we showed before. But here in the red zone, you've got the receiver here and Le'Veon is right here. So what they're going to do is run a concept to high low the defense. Le'Veon's going to run in, come out, but not only the route, but his ability to catch the ball. This is a low throw. You can watch his hands on this one to go down and make this catch and get in the end zone. All right. See the snap. Goes in, pops out, low throw, catches it off of the ground, touchdown for the Jets. Big weapon for them. All right, our thanks to Will McClay. Just an example of what the Jets have with Sam Darnold back at quarterback. And here's what the Cowboys are saying this week. We, we know what the expectations is. Um, it's about all 11. We can't just have 
you know, one guy, you know, out there making the tackle. Um, we got to have all um, 11 hats to the ball at all times. We got to make sure we're, we see a little, see a lot, like Coach Marino always says, you know, see a little, you see a lot. You see a lot, you see too much, your head's around, you, you're not going to see nothing. It's going to blow right past you. So we got to make sure, you know, we we pay attention to our assignment, you know, our key, and just play our key. If we play our key, we'll be all right. And now we are rejoined by Coach Garrett as Will looks at uh, Sam Darnold returning. Of course, he was there for the Jets' season opener. Third pick in the draft last year out of USC. He was picked so high in the draft, you did not necessarily have an up-close look at him leading up to the draft last year because you were picking much lower. But what, what impresses you the most about Sam Darnold? Oh, I think there's a lot of things that are impressive about him. You know, he, he was a really productive player in college, and I think you saw his leadership skills there. You saw a lot of intangibles, his instincts as a player. He certainly has ability. He's big. Uh, he's athletic. He's got a very good arm. He can escape. He can make any kind of throw you want. But I think the thing that stuck out to everybody was that leadership and the intangible qualities and the instinctiveness with which he played. And then Le'Veon Bell, of course, three-time pro bowler in his career after sitting out last year now uh, with the Jets. Uh, he's a special running back, isn't he? He is just a great football player, and uh, he's such a complete back. He's so dangerous as a runner, and, and he can run the ball inside. He can run the ball outside. He's got great patience as a runner. He, he, he's willing to kind of sit in there and let things develop and set things up a little bit. Then he has the quickness and the acceleration, the explosiveness to go hit the hole or go bounce it outside. A lot of signature runs through the years with Pittsburgh and now with the Jets, but he's also an outstanding pass receiver. They throw it to him out of the backfield. Sometimes they line him up outside. They try to get the ball in his hands a lot of different ways. You know, uh, when you look at the stats through five games of this season, offensively and defensively, you're ranking in the top five, top ten in most every category. There's one stat in particular, which is starting field position on offense, which you're 31st in the league. And I guess that says a little bit about takeaways on defense. I know that's something that you stress on a, on a regular basis. Uh, what is it that needs to happen to, to improve on that? Yeah, we just need to start making them. You know, we have the guys who are capable of doing it, the down guys, the linebackers, and the guys in the secondary. And, and we just need to start making them. We need to affect the quarterback more. You know, we need to uh, catch those tips and overthrows, as Coach Richard says. We need to pick up some fumbles, knock the ball out a little bit. And, and, and I believe we're capable of doing that. And those really are the difference-making statistics in football. The last couple of weeks, we've turned the ball over too much on offense. It's hurt us. We haven't taken the ball away enough on defense. It's hurt us. And, and ultimately, the other stats matter and they're important, but that's the one that's most important. We've got to start doing a better job of that. All right, when we come back here on the Jason Garrett Show, it's our Unsung Star of the Week. Final couple minutes here of the Jason Garrett Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Unsung Star of the Week time. It is a, a new player to the Cowboys this year. Signed him in free agency, former Houston Texan, a Rice Owl, a Canadian, Christian Covington, who the last couple of weeks has averaged 50 snaps for you with Antoine Woods being out. Had a couple of tackles for loss last week. So Christian Covington's my guy this yeah, week. Yeah, you're right. He, he is new to us, but, but he's someone who we admired from afar. You know, coming out of school and we followed his career. We had a chance to bring him here. We're excited to do so because, you know, you, you hear me talk about, you know, the idea of uh, being the right kind of guy a lot, and that's the kind of team we want to have. He certainly is that. He loves football. He's physically tough. He's mentally tough. You said he's played a lot of snaps for us in Antoine Woods' absence. He's a good run defender. He's around the ball a lot. He's around the quarterback, and he just goes about it the right way. And, uh, and when you have that physical toughness inside, that mental toughness inside, it gets contagious throughout your team. So certainly done a really good job for us so far. I know you're a student of the game as far as NFL history. What about CFL history and Grover Covington, the Canadian Football League Hall of Famer, who is Christian Covington's father? Is that 157 right? sacks in his CFL career. Are you kidding me? No. And you know what's particularly challenging about the CFL? They have a one-yard neutral zone. Oh, wow. So if you That's can right. make If you can make sacks, with a one-yard neutral zone, you're a pretty good pass rusher. <laughs> so it's in Christian Covington's blood. Grover Covington, our shout-out of the week, our other unsung star That's of the week. That's fantastic. All well right, done. Jason Garrett, we appreciate it. We appreciate you joining us here for the Jason Garrett Show, and we will see you again next week. The Jason Garrett Show was brought to you by Ford. Ford is the best in Texas. Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. Geico, 
15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' film and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. A little nugget. Hamilton Tiger Cats. Yeah. Tiger <laughs> <Nine> Cats. <laughs>